Hello, my name is Zach Kramer, and I thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time to tell my story of living and working near wind turbines. My wife is Angela Kramer, and she did approve my story. We own property in Minden and Delaware Township, and I live in Minden Township. I am not formally educated on any of these topics. This is just my story in a, in a page format, um, living with um, wind turbines. I happen to be one of these more sensitive people, and I will not go on uh, a cruise ship with my wife or ride fair rides. So this is impacting me, and I've noticed it. Here's my story. Living in Michigan Wind 2 and DTE Wind Energy, they do affect me, and we deserve a say. I worked for six years for a large automotive-based event company. Doing this, I traveled a lot, was stationed for work in 49 U.S. states. I had seen many large wind turbine developments, always way off in the distance, with hundreds of machines spinning, from a distance, these mas massive spinning man-made giants were amazing. These developments were never accompanied by housing, farms, towns, and schools. They were always in a very isolated area and terrain. I was one of the people that thought these wind turbine developments were pretty cool. When the rumors started about wind turbines coming to the thumb, I often found myself in conversation with other young people discussing reasons for these turbines and where they would be put. Being someone that was well-traveled and had seen so many of these wind turbines, I usually always promoted these big giants as not being any kind of a nuisance to travel by. The main contradictory point some of my friends would contest was they're here every day, Zach. Living with them and traveling by them are two very different things. For a long time, I could not wrap myself around this. I would try and imagine living next, living next to these turbines and doing everyday things around them. Before I knew it, we were seeing this first turbine developments in the thumb. I would drive and visit these areas quite frequently, always looking for different potential ways of impact. 20 visits later still did not make me realize what they were like to live near every day of the year. I learned this in hindsight, so, like so many people are learning across the U.S. and world. My wife and I started restoring my great-grandparents' home, which they built 100 years ago this year. We were very excited about having this fourth-generation home and started with the roof doors and, and the windows, $20,000 of our money invested. Within months of hearing rumors of a 52-wind turbine development centered in our township, we saw things being underway. They started building the turbines. This was a project that had to be done by the end of the year in order to get the federal money reimbursement. This is what we were told, and it was going to happen no matter anyone's ex objections. When these turbines got built, nothing slowed the process. If these companies had any roadblocks along the way, they just spent the amount of dollars necessary to overcome them. There was seeming no budget to keep within or any limit to what these companies could do. Wow, this got our attention. In a short time, I had three turbines in front of my house, a half mile away, one behind my house, 1,500 feet, and two more behind my house, a half a mile. I drive to my third generation family business, and we have four wind turbines all the way around us at a half a mile, and one at 2,000 feet in all directions. Wherever I look, I have red flashing lights. My barnyard has sheds on three sides making a box. The noise this makes is one of the strangest noises I know. Never knowing when it's going to happen, during the daytime I can really never hear the turbines. The terrible noise doesn't come till late afternoon and evening and into the night. I have never heard of a wind turbine promoter giving nighttime tours of a wind development and that conflicts me. This noise starts to happen right about the time I really used to enjoy hunting. Right when the evening air becomes still at ground level and all the noises become alive. All of a sudden, the noise from the turbines become moving air becomes audible to my human ear. It becomes a louder and much more confusing sound. I can't tell if I'm hearing noise in front of me, behind me, or beside me. As the air current pushes the noise around, I start to become dizzy and disoriented, and I haven't even started to look up and see the giant spinning blades or red flashing lights. Electric motor whining that comes and goes and the directional motor noises mix in with this. This strange pulsating sound is the most agitating noise I have ever heard. 
In my barnyard, there are evenings where this noise is louder than standing on outdoor loading at Detroit Metro Airport, where I have been many times. This may be a small percentage of the time, but it does happen nevertheless. This whole topic is relative to how many turbines may be surrounding you. In our zoning ordinance, the developer may have permission may have permission to build a turbine 1,320 feet from your home. And it's, it's thought of that very often, a turbine. We don't stop to realize if you stand at your home and turn in a 360 degree circle, you may have a dozen turbines in a circle around you. Now it doesn't matter which direction the wind is out of, you will always be affected. I have been confronted by many people that live by a wind turbine and say that they hear nothing. They may only have this one turbine at 2,000 feet north of their home, never having the opportunity to experience the sun east, south, or west of their turbine. It all revolves around relativity and how many we could potentially have around us. Um, I'm gonna get into a, a real short area here uh, and then continue with the story, but this reflects all of what you may do is research after the fact, after this happens. Things we started thinking about after this happened. Comparisons to progress I've been confronted with. Electric lines, freeways, ships, there is no comparison. These are spinning skyscrapers that are in my line of sight in all directions. They're spinning, that is a sickening motion just in itself. Um, when we drive around our local area, we all drive down Ruth Road. It's our main corridor. And people look at these turbines, and I believe that these turbines were very strategically placed so that, that moving further down into the county, people had a sense what they felt was a distance from their home, what it would be. These 52 turbines and then 17 additionally from DTE, when you drive down Ruth Road, out of all those turbines, there's only three that are closer than a half a mile, approximate half a mile away from Ruth Road. So it's very deceiving. It seems like it's been uh, done on purpose. Um, another topic, efficiency. Wow, why are you building a green power source that is 25% efficient? Um, you can go on about that for a long time, but I believe, simply put, this is not green. High efficiency is green by definition. 25% is not efficient. A subsidy, that could be a long drug out topic. I won't talk for very long about it, but they're subsidized. Um, the electrical output, I believe, um, data should be affordable for all of the public to see an app on our computer or even a visible meter at the road where they're running at, possibly 20 or only 30% capacity of their nameplate generation. If we saw those types of examples, we would be able to realize this doesn't make sense, but they're all, all, all those those examples are hidden from us. Sustainability. If they don't, if they're not efficient enough to create their own revenue, who will be able to keep funding them? All of the entities and individuals, including the landowners, will quit receiving any money. America just needs the electricity, and you guys are forced to live with them. If you don't like that, move out. This is called just another canceled program, I believe. It's potential. This has also been done in our country's history the Tennessee Valley, uh, Tennessee Valley Authority has offset the largest population ever recorded in, in American history because of water power supply to make electricity, and that probably made sense. We need to be able to fund this, or else we're not going to stay being able to live here. Uh, the complaints, no complaints, right? Nobody has any complaints. I've got a topic. Um, a good way to cover this. Uh, your friends are gonna say, ah, you're crazy. These aren't that bad. One year into it, backyard deck parties, working out in the garden, the lawn, flicker through my blinds. These things are annoying. Two years into it, don't even bring up the topic. They won't even talk about it because not many people really want to admit they were wrong. It all goes away. People are not educated on issues when pushy salespeople come through and offer money. Many adult people and elderly landowners are stating they won't have 
to live with them for very long, but they would just like to help create some money for younger generations. These are the same people that are most often being warned to watch out for phone or email or mail order scams. I find myself wanting to go anywhere these turbines aren't spinning. Go work at my friend's shed, retreat back to Minden City where turbines are all at least 4,200 feet from our house. Planning 115 foot pine transplants, thousands of dollars to, spend up a tree, to speed up a tree line around our home. It's so nice to drive to Sandusky or Marlette down M53 or anywhere there isn't any turbines in my line of sight. If our zoning and regulations are not in play, promises by wind companies who only have one or two per square mile will not be recognized. Our governments need to have enough to play, enough in play to protect us from an overwhelming amount of turbines being built. If everyone isn't receiving funding from wind development, people wouldn't be fighting to make it easy for turbine companies to have places to put them at 1,320 feet from your home. This would not be a problem if our governments had reasonable systems in place to protect us. In my wind zoning ordinance that I have right here for Minden Township, I look for one very important word. This word is widely prioritized in the world. All of us in this room will probably agree this word refers to, to a topic, topic that controls, controls all of our manufacturing, manufacturing in the world. It also controls all of the human use of manufactured goods in the world. Our car makers are forced to crash thousands of new vehicles to prove, prove standards for usage. This word that I am looking for is safety and I have my township zoning ordinance, uh, wind zoning ordinance right here. Where is my safety control prioritized in my zoning ordinance? We can't find this word until the sixth page after topics like avian analysis and visual appearance have been addressed. Our government has not forced real world crash test data to be developed. These turbines should have been tested with mechanical failure scenarios and data collected to provide worst case scenario distances from homes, schools, road right of ways, and non participants. This would create the ability to form safety controls and policies for all parties involved, including fire and EMS, which, in fact, there are no accident policies and procedures in the U.S. for right now. The participants are the only ones signing safety and personal impact waivers in a control, in a contract form. I feel this is proof of lack of safety prioritization by our only regulating force, our township, county, or state zoning. That's my proof. I am a mechanically inclined person. When I get near turbines, my hair stands up and I start to picture the mechanical scenarios that could go wrong with them. I personally am just not willing to let my little two-year-old boy play near a danger zone this massive. And I'll stop this real quick here before I finish up with my last thought. Over the last week, I was able to have this article given to me. And you guys, if you can write this down or we don't have any handouts for this article, Video. This article was written um, in the Fire Rescue One News by Chief Gary Balker. The, the title, title of it is Three Wind, wind Turbine, turbine Failures Firefighters, firefighters Must Know. It's three pages long. This man, this man has credentials that are almost half a page that are federal and state credentials. As a U.S. Air Force retired fire chief. On the third page of this article, pieces of blades have been documented as traveling over 4,200 feet. That's why I say I will not let my little boy play within these distances 
that we don't have any control parameters for. So the last thing I'm going to follow up with, right or wrong? Is this right or wrong? The big question we need to ask ourselves, are non-participants being affected? Yes. Should we as affected homeowners have a say for safety? Yes. Individuals should be concerned about doing the right thing versus collecting another check and becoming a random individual who gets to have a turban and collect money. The first line in our wind contract should show concern for all neighboring parties involved within a certain reasonable safe distance, not 1,320 feet. All of these citizens need to be in agreement with the distance, distance from their home and their property. I say right or wrong, let's think of our neighbors and not just their checkbooks. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Uh, is Dennis Weber still here? Did he take off? Oh, yeah. oh sorry, I didn't see you right here. Okay, we have, we're going to stop our formal part of the presentation right now, but I know some of you may be elected or appointed officials. We have a couple people I want to recognize. Uh, Bob McLean is from the Paris Township uh, Planning Commission. He's the vice chairman, right? And he was the vice chairman of the Wind Turbine Subcommittee in Huron County. And Dennis is the zoning administrator from Denmark Township, where they ultimately rejected a wind energy project. He's, he's a great guy and a great resource. So if he, any trustees or supervisors want to ask any kinds of, or, or commissioners want to ask any questions about the nuts and bolts of zoning for these kinds of things, these guys are available here. Um, I'm going to turn over to Ramey. All right, well, we want to thank you all for coming. Uh, we want to thank our four speakers, uh, Ted and Richard and Kevin and Zach. They did a wonderful job of getting us the information we asked them to get out to you. Uh, we have tables with information. Please help yourself. There's some sample ballots. If you want to read the language on the Argyle and Wheatland Township ballots there. But please help yourself to the information. There's some DVDs. We'd like to have you stay for a uh, spaghetti supper that they've uh, arranged for you. They've got spaghetti and stuff on this side. And it starts over here and goes around. Salad and desserts. And then we've got the table on the back room back here. Just follow right around, right through the doors, right to the back. There's some table and chairs back there. And please help yourself. Please stay with us for supper. We appreciate it. And thank you all for coming.